Today on News 4 Now, charged with a hate crime, an arrest in the unprovoked box cutter slashing of a woman in Times Square. How low that humidity goes before temperatures start soaring again. And a New York City mecca for movie lovers is making a comeback. We'll show you where the legendary Kim's video has a new store. Hey, what's up, friends? This is News for Now for Tuesday, August 2nd. I'm Kay Ingram. Now, first up, new information on a slashing attack in Times Square. Police have arrested 30-year-old Anthony Evans and charged him with assault and a hate crime. Surveillance video shows him walking up behind a woman pulling a cart on Sunday before slashing her right arm with a box cutter. Now, the good news is the woman did survive the attack and is now recovering. Up next, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has touched down in Taiwan as part of her controversial tour of Asia. Beijing had warned the Biden administration that such a high-level visit would be seen as meddling in their internal affairs and has promised what it calls serious consequences. China claims independent Taiwan is part of China. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan spoke about the trip this morning on Today. The uh, ball is in China's court not to escalate, not to take measures that would destabilize relationship, uh, the relationship across the Taiwan Strait. But of course, the United States is going to do whatever is necessary to defend our interests, to protect our people, and to ensure a free and open Indo-Pacific. And we are going to continue that policy as we watch what China uh, does in the coming days. Speaker Pelosi is scheduled to travel to Japan and South Korea later this week. A murder investigation is underway on Long Island after a woman was found shot to death inside of her own apartment. This week, detectives returned to her home at the Allure and Mineola, a luxury apartment complex. Police say that the 39-year-old woman's body was found during a wellness check over the weekend. Officers have not yet identified the woman, but neighbors say she worked in the building and was a warm presence. She was so sweet. She was so nice. You know, everything. You know, it's just horrible to hear what happened to her. You know. I don't, I, I don't know how safe I feel living over here right now. I have, I, I said, I, I, we definitely need more security over here. Police have not released any information about any possible suspects or motives, but a spokesman for the building released a statement saying, quote, we will continue to cooperate with law enforcement as the investigation continues. And New York City Mayor Eric Adams has declared a monkeypox state of emergency. That'll allow him to suspend local laws and enact new virus management rules. The city so far has reported nearly 1,500 cases. Meanwhile, in Connecticut, Senator Richard Blumenthal is calling on President Biden to use the Defense Production Act to make more vaccine doses. Last night, the White House confirmed Bob Fenton from FEMA will be named National Monkeypox Coordinator. Hi there, I'm Storm Team 4 meteorologist Maria La Rosa. Pretty nice looking summer evening ahead. Temperatures though staying mild, still into the mid 80s through dinner time, but with fair skies. 10 o'clock temperature 82 will be about 80 at 11 o'clock as temperatures for the most part fall back into the 70s. One little hiccup, maybe a spotty shower or a rumble of thunder. You can see by late evening, most areas not going to see anything but clear skies and that will continue through tomorrow morning. With humidity coming down just a bit, enough to notice it tomorrow morning. It'll be a little bit more comfortable, but the heat will be back on for the afternoon, so keep that in mind. 72 for the low in the city, 70 in Islip, north and west. Temperatures dropping into the mid and upper 60s from White Plains, Poughkeepsie at 61, a few 50s, especially north and west and higher elevations from Sussex to Monticello. All right, so some longtime New Yorkers will remember Kim's video in the East Village. In the days before Netflix and streaming, it was the ultimate video store full of films you could find nowhere else. Well, now Kim's is making a comeback. New York Live's Joel Gargiulo shows us how. Check it out. In 1986, a New York icon was born, Kim's Music and Video. But after suddenly closing its doors in 2009, its quirky collection went from the East Village to a Sicilian warehouse, and now it is back here in New York City at the Alamo Draft House on Liberty Street. 
we got 55,000 items. We've uh, put about 15,000 of them out already. We just went through and got kind of the best of the best, the things that you can't really find anywhere else. There's a lot of really choice cuts. There's stuff that never made it to digital, never made it to streaming. So there's not a DVD, there's not a, a Blu-ray. You can't stream it anywhere. The VHS copy is the only way to see it. And we're still working through it. We've got pallets and pallets of media. I mean, we have less than a quarter of the stuff ready out here and renting. So we're working through it and as time goes on, it's gonna to continue to expand. Okay, so some people might come here and they might say, okay, I don't have a VCR, I don't have a DVD player. To that I say we have DVD players and VCRs for rent. Um, our VCRs have, are digital compatible, so you can plug them into a current modern TV and watch any of the stuff we rent. The rentals are all free. I have a limit of three items. Uh, pick out whatever you want, take it home for free, and then there's late fees at $2 a day if you bring it back late. But beyond that, it's, it's free to rent the media. I think it's almost like a, a rite of passage to get a late fee if you've never if you've yeah. never gotten one before. Like I remember that feeling of going to the video store yeah. and going through to see if your title was there. And if it was, it was just this full on geek out moment. Yeah. You take for granted the fact that you think you can find anything online right now. That yeah. you, oh, I can I can YouTube it or I can Netflix it or I can find anything. And there is leg legitimately stuff here that you're not gonna find. I mean, we found content that was recorded off of TV. Um, Alyssa Milano, when she was kind of at the height of her Who's the Boss popularity, did a, a workout video. I remember this. We have that. Stop it has it. a plot and she raps around. at the awesome. end of it. That's so cool. So yeah. come for the nostalgia, yeah. for the free rentals. But like everybody needs to experience a late fee once in their life. That's yeah. all I'm going to say. Two bucks a day. <laughs> That's yeah. it. That's yeah. it. Thank you. No, thank you. This rocks. Yeah. Long Island beaches have dealt with one shark sighting after another this summer. One fisherman who's fascinated by the creatures says that he caught more than a dozen in a single day at Gilgo Beach. News 4's Paisy Chang has more on why sharks are thriving in our local waters. We're on, we're on. It took some effort for Long Island fisherman Chris Stefanu to reel it in. Oh, here he is. His catch, what appeared to be a brown shark. You wanna keep these guys in the watch? so that they could continue to get water. He showed us how he unhooks the shark and then releases it back into the water. For Stefanu, who calls himself Shark Man, this is part sport, part intrigue. My favorite animal, the favorite creature in the ocean, they fascinate me. I've been tagging them for about, not, just over nine years I've been tagging them. And what that does, it helps figure out their migration patterns, it figures out where they're congregating. Yesterday, Stefanu says he caught a whopping 14 sharks while surf casting from Gilgo Beach. Yesterday was a crazy day. We caught 14 sharks from the beach. Um, the water was super, super clear. While Stefanu's hobby and work is considered controversial to ecologists, yesterday's find is part of a very real fact. Cleaner and warmer waters is attracting more fish to Long Island, like bunker fish and the larger fish that prey on them. There are more sharks in our waters right now. Greg Metzger is a Long Island shark researcher and says sharks are thriving here because of successful conservation efforts. It's definitely the bunker, definitely the bait fish, which goes back to the clarity of the water and the healthiness of the water. So it's a very good thing that we're seeing all this bunker. The ramifications are you do see increased shark sightings. Recent shark encounters at Long Island beaches have raised concerns, especially since swimmers have been wounded. Town of Babylon officials say sharks are a part of life and advise swimmers to be wary. And our lifeguards are very good at making sure that we have um, the buddy system that's in place. We try to make sure that someone goes out, you know, and they're always having a head on a swivel. They're watching the water at all times to see if there are active bait pods. And shark experts say you can expect even more shark sightings come August because the water is even warmer and that this could extend till October. Reporting from Gilgo Beach, Paisy Cheng, News 4 New York. All right, friends, that's it for today. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here tomorrow.